substances which are not electrolyte are phospholipids, phospholipids, cholesterol, glucose, bile salts, creatinine, remember creatinine, urea, blood urea, nitrogen and creatinine um, and so on. So, smaller other uric acid, urea, so urea, uric acid and, and these things. But by far these are the majority of the things. So if I came to you and I said okay, so what is in the blood vessels? You would say it has 3 liter of uh, fluids, about 2 liters of packed cell volume that is red blood cell, 99 percent of that is red blood cell. Then we have other white blood cells and platelets and so on, but 99 percent red blood cells. Then you would say that in here you are going to talk about things in two, in two separate categories, ionic elements and non-ionic. So in the case of ionic you will say there are proteins and albumin is the majority, greater concentration 80 percent is albumin, negatively charged, cause the dominant effect, pull the positives to them and push the negatives out. Then you would say over here you have more sodium, you have more chloride, you have less potassium, you have more bicarbonate. More sodium, more chloride, less potassium, more bicarbonate, do not forget that. This is as compared to the cell. So, so if they say okay, more sodium compared to what? Compared to the cell. So we are comparing these two things. Then non-electrolytes, non-charged elements, the majority the majority I would say about 60 percent of non-charged elements are phospholipids and then about another 20, 25 percent is the cholesterol. So these are the fatty acids and cholesterols which are making about 70, 80 percent of the remaining uh, substances in here. Then glucose is a major amount you know that about 80 to 100 milligram per deciliter. Then we have bile salts, creatinines, urea, uric acids and, and stuff like that. So these are the compositions here. So another important takeaway, what caused the sodium to be outside more? Sodium potassium ATPS pump. That pump is responsible to keep the sodium out. Do not forget this. This is the very important concept for you. It is going to be very important for understanding how the edema occurs. This is very important to understand how the, the intracellular or non-pitting edema occurs. This is very important to understand how the muscular functions and the neurological functions and those things they work. So sodium very important um, factor to understand more on the outside, potassium very important more on the inside, bicarbonate very important for acid base balances, it is a buffering system more on the outside, chloride is a buddy of the sodium, so wherever sodium is the chloride is there, so more on the outside, less on the inside. Water of course would follow these, these are the drivers, so water would then be falling. So what are, what are the factors which keep water here and what are the factors which keep water here? So please remember this, now do not forget this. The water distribution in this area, intravascular versus interstitial, the factor which decide how much water gets out of the vessel into the interstitium and then how much water comes back. Remember the hydrostatic pressure and the oncotic pressure, the oncotic pressure is the pressure on the water exerted by the proteins right and the hydrostatic pressure is the pressure exerted on a, on a fluid present in a pipe due to the diameter and, the, and, and those things. So the oncotic pressure and the hydrostatic pressure, these are the factors which define how much fluid would stay in the vessel and how much would go out in the interstitium. So when you have edema, edema would mean we will talk more about it edema would mean there is more fluid either in the, in the interstitium or the cells have swollen up and they have gotten more fluid in them. Anyways the tissue is swollen up. So whenever you have edema, the fluid has moved out of the vascular system into the interstitium or out of the vascular system into the interstitium and into the cell and you have to understand why that happened. There are two basic factors, you have oncotic pressure of the proteins and you have the hydrostatic pressure. So you should immediately as a doctor, as a student you should say okay, 
the person has edema what happened to his hydrostatic pressure. So then you should see all those factors which contribute to the hydrostatic pressure and you should say okay what happened to his oncotic pressure and you should see all those factors which contribute to the protein for example liver cirrhosis reduce amount of proteins manufactured reduce amount of proteins present in the intravascular system less protein in the intravascular system less oncotic pressure what would happen the water will become a very sad guy and say okay fine I have less protein I was a happy water but I think I cannot live here anymore because I was holding on to my dear friend proteins they are not there anymore I am going to move out. So the water is going to move out in the interstitium right or think about this somehow due to hypoxia or other uh, cellular membrane injury or some toxic poisons which cause a sodium potassium pump to reduce functioning what will happen sodium would move into the cell and remember sodium always so sodium always so this is let us say sodium sodium always have water with him as a friend so water is here sodium is here when the sodium moves in it takes water with him. So what happens the cell would start swelling up sodium potassium pump is not working it is not throwing the sodium back out and so the sodium is going to stay in and the water is going to stay in the cell is going to swell up. So what happens is um, again we will do edema as a separate topic but just very quickly remember the uh, pitting edema versus non pitting edema if the sodium potassium pump is not working correctly if sodium is going inside the cells and cells are swelling up then if you press on that tissue it is a cell which is swollen up water cannot just squish out and squish back in or cannot just squeeze out and in so the edema would stay the tissue swelling would stay so that is called non pitting edema non pitting edema actually means either the cells are swollen or the edema is present in the interstitial space but it is fibrosed there is fibrosis which has occurred. So non pitting edema usually means that we have uh, uh, swollen cells on the other hand pitting edema that means what when the fluid has moved from the intravascular systems abnormally into the interstitial system and interstitial system is not able to handle that fluid there is so much of the fluid that lymphatics cannot take it back and the fluid cannot move back in the vascular system why because either the hydrostatic pressure got altered or the oncotic pressure got altered if in this case if you press on this tissue the fluid is going to disperse out and when you remove the pressure it is going to come back so that is a pitting edema. So we will talk more about that at a later time but the driver the driver I am saying it again and again do not forget this the driver to keep the fluid in balance between the intravascular and interstitial are hydrostatic pressure drivers and the oncotic factors anything which changes them would cause abnormality of distribution here. On the other hand what causes the fluid to go in the cell or come out of the cell purely ions purely ions do not tell me that hey we would have the oncotic pressure which would cause the blood cell uh, the, the fluid to go inside the cell or do not tell me the hydrostatic pressure is causing that the factor which regulate the amount of fluid present inside the cell are purely ionic concentrations. So these two are very very important factors to understand all right so now uh, we will close here in our next chapter in our next lecture we will talk about osmosis and osmotic pressures thank you bye.